Hey gang, Zippo. This is kind of a an unboxing after the unboxing. Um, if you guys watched a recent video that I posted, uh, was coming down with a cold, turned into full blown bronchitis, and uh, coming out of the tail end of it and feeling better. And um, this uh, was a box full of goodies that I got from a very good friend in Bath, New York. Uh, Mr. Evil Minion himself and he had asked me if I did an unboxing and quite honestly I walked around in a fog and a daze for so many days I don't remember half of what I did or didn't do during those days but I do know I didn't shoot a video on uh, the contents of the box um, he got a 64 landlord and asked me if there was any parts off of it that I'd like to have uh, I've rebuilt some carburetors for him and whatnot, and we just kind of barter back and forth with helping one another out with stuff. And he uh, gave me first dibs on it, and I told him a couple of things that I'd like to have, and I'll show you those things. Uh, then above and beyond those things, he he went above and beyond and went ahead and uh, sent some other things that uh, I didn't ask for, which are greatly appreciated, and they'll certainly be put to good use. But if you'll bear with me, we'll get over. I'll show you guys first off the uh, bevel gearbox here. Now, this is exactly the way I like to receive a bevel gearbox or a tractor. Totally and completely covered with grease and goop. That tells me two things. One, it was maintained. Why do I say it was maintained? It wouldn't have grease and gunk all over it if the rest of the tractor hadn't been greased the way it was supposed to and hadn't been taken care of mechanically. You don't have to keep, some, keep something pristine to keep it in good mechanical condition. And my hunch was right on this one when I pulled out of the box. I thought, oh, that's perfect. Uh, here's the reason why I say that. You get one that's all nice and clean and there's no junk or gunk anywhere or anything like that. Um, chances are that's a person who's more geared towards cosmetics than they are maintenance and maintaining things. Um, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it, but uh, some of the things you need to check on a bevel gearbox are how much play there is between your cross shaft and your output shaft. Here we can do it this way. Let's set the yoke. This is one of the items I don't uh, believe I asked for, which is the yoke, and I'm very glad that he included it. And never have too many of those. I'm just going to set it on there nice and gentle like. And uh, just to show you guys how tight this bevel gearbox is. First and foremost, you want to check your horizontal play and see if you have any horizontal play. And with the side plates, he just cut the side plates off and left uh, the pieces of the side plates on, which is perfect. That enables me to get things off and try to save this stamp steel pulley over here. Um, also included uh, is the slip clutch that goes like so with the rope start cut. Okay. Um, but anyway, check your side to side play. You need to check your side to side play. You also need to check your rotational play. So when you rotate the pulley, you need to watch your output shaft and see how much play there is, how much rotation you're going to get here versus how much lag time there is from when your yoke is going to start moving. Check this out for as being as close to perfect as you can possibly get, okay? Uh, I don't know how much of my hand gestures have been in there, but let's go over here. Huh? Watch the yoke. I don't know if you guys can see that moving or not, but when I say there is no play, no play, in that bevel gearbox whatsoever. I'm, I'm talking nothing. Zero zip zilch. So that's a wonderful thing. So anyway, we got the bevel gearbox from him and the yoke, and I appreciate the yoke on that. Uh, the slip clutch hub 
along with the starter cup. Also, an item I didn't ask for, which he did throw in, which I'm real glad he did, is the clutch pedal and the clutch pedal bracket. And it is in very good shape too. Um, now this is an earlier one, so it does not have the grease zerk. And the bushings in it are in really good shape. There's no play in that whatsoever, which is nice. Also, the steering gear, 64 and earlier, I think it's 65 and earlier, had uh, two-piece gears. Um, the block is in really nice, good, tight shape. Almost no play in that at all. And like I say, plenty of dirt, grease, and grime. Another nice thing that I noticed was a new grease zerk was added. And if you've got a new grease zerk or piles of grease, like you can see here, around grease zerks, you know that something's been taken care of and the maintenance has been done on it. Another great thing. Okay? So, needless to say, these are in both beautiful, beautiful shape. Another item I didn't ask for but did receive and do appreciate is the right hand hub or left hand hub. Um, you can never have too many of them and the keyway in this is just beautiful. Nice and clean and clear and crisp going all the way down through there. Uh, did not ask for the seat mount bracket but he sent the seat mount bracket which is awesome and the idler pulley in fantastic shape and it's the original one. Mind you this is all from a 50 year old tractor, 1964 Simplicity Landlord. So, uh, one thing I did ask for was that belt guard, and that belt guard would go over here on this side of the belt gearbox just to help keep your belt on. Is that right? Da -da -da. Get my mind. No, that goes on that side. It goes on that side. So, very appreciated. That goes. Also along with this is the uh, bracket that goes uh, along with this, uh, the clutch rod in your spring attaches to this. It's in the clutch and braking system. Another great thing to have. On over it on the table here, and we'll come around to the other side and make it a little easier, is ignition switch. And although it's not an original ignition switch, it is just a single on-off position. So it's perfect. It's going to work great in Franken Tractor, and that's exactly where she's going to go is in Franken Tractor. So got that. Then push button starter. I haven't tested it, but by the looks of the rest of things and, and as tight and as nice as everything else is, my guess is that that's all good to go. It's going to be a good starter switch. He even included the wires with it, which is great, uh, all the way down to the ammeter, amp meter wire. So having the amp meter wire there is also nice, and it still has the uh, original cloth sheathing on it. So this is a, a very unmolested 64 Landlord, and uh, I'm just ecstatic at the condition of the parts. Yes, they're dirty. So what? That'll clean up. Beautiful, beautiful. I just love it. And when we get over, we've got uh, the cables. Um, unfortunately, in shipping, the throttle cable, the top of the throttle cable was broke off. Uh, the, the piece also, somehow, was not in the box. I can tell it's a fresh break. I know that the break happened in shipment, but no big deal. I've got this part, I just didn't have the cables. It's even got the insulator here that uh, helps keep from uh, rubbing the casing through in one certain spot when these are mounted to the tractor. And also, it's got all the way down to the adjusting nuts for the throttle on your throttle plate and even the cable uh, tie. And same thing with the choke. It has the choke bracket and both of the nuts still in place. Just wonderful. Fantastic. Now, we think that we'd be just about done there, but I did ask for something else. I asked for the, uh, for the grill. I crossed in front of the camera again. And uh, the, yeah, I'm not worried about the grill mesh. I, I don't need the grill mesh at all, so I wasn't at all worried about not having that. Uh, being in pristine shape. But 
the body of the grill is in good shape. Uh, apparently it was left with the hood off and there's a little bit of swelling here on either side. But someone did go through and paint over top of the chrome. I love it when people paint over top of chrome because nine times out of ten you clean that paint off you can salvage a good bit of the chrome. So that's the hope there. Also, uh, if I think about it when I do it, I'll show you guys how to straighten out these bulges. What happens is water gets down into the top. Uh, let me get it low enough. Water gets down into the tops of the uh, uprights when the hoods when there's not a hood on there, and when that happens, the water freezes in there. When it does, just causes those to expand. It should it should hopefully just compress right back to normal size and like I said this wasn't a uh, deal breaker this piece not being in, in great shape that didn't matter to me I was even surprised that the landlord decal is in uh, remarkably good shape considering the 50 years that uh, the tractor has been around and then although I didn't ask for it he managed to squeeze it into the box for me I'm going to go back around the other side. He even sent me the dash tower, or dash tower, the dash. So I've got that and these extra, these little extra added things that uh, uh, you put in there for me, Mr. Evil, Thomas, um, definitely appreciated, uh, way appreciated. Um, as soon as the weather breaks here, I'm certainly going to put much of this to good use. Some of it will go into the parts bins for later use. But you guys, uh, there was an amp meter also included in this. My buddy of mine came over. It was readily available. I've got others. But it was sitting there. And I went ahead and gave it to him because he was needing one for a build that he's doing. But, uh, Oh, I don't think I mentioned the brake drum and brake band, which also is a really great thing. Uh, and the brake band is in good shape. Even included the yoke uh, and the mounting bracket that comes with the uh, brake band itself. So, fantastic. Uh, very, very happy with the, with the uh, group of goodies that was in the box. And I certainly do uh, intend on putting all of it to great use. I want to thank all of you for listening to me babble for almost 13 minutes. And this is Zippo. I'll catch you all the next time. Later. I'm out.